Spirit Airlines is fighting tooth and nail to stay alive nowadays. At one point, Spirit was the most profitable airline in the U.S., earning 40% more per plane than any other carrier. In the following years, its stock soared, with flights 30% cheaper than competitors. But after engine troubles, plane delivery delays, and two failed mergers, Spirit Airlines shares have taken a nosedive. And now, after reporting narrower losses for the last quarter, its future is up in the air. So what went wrong? $5 for a boarding pass, $30 for checked luggage, $3 for water, $1 for animal crackers. Spirit Airlines charged for basically everything, allowing it to sell tickets at rock bottom prices. The only complimentary item on the plane is ice. Before we continue the video, please support the channel by hitting the subscribe and like button and also share the video. Thanks for watching. Spirit bet there were a lot of customers that regular airlines were kind of leaving on the table because they just could not afford the cost of a ticket. From 2008 through 2012, Spirit earned $289 million with just 40 planes at most in operation. Only two U.S. airlines earned more in the period, Southwest and Alaska Air, which both had far more planes. And three years after going public, Spirit was the most profitable, fastest growing U.S. airline. Stock prices hit an all-time high. But as profits were reaching new heights, cracks in its business were starting to show. In 2011, Spirit was also the airline with the most complaints. From a customer perspective, Spirit didn't have the best reputation. Even with this negative reputation, the CEO blew off the criticism, basically saying, you get what you pay for. He released a statement stating, no one goes into McDonald's and is surprised they don't see filet mignon on the menus, right? Even still, Spirit executives said they were optimistic. The company had pioneered a new airline business model in the U.S., and for the first five years, it had been successful. But other companies had been watching. As soon as fuel prices dipped in 2015, carriers slashed prices on some tickets, cutting into Spirit's customer base. For example, Delta Airlines introduced a new cabin class called Basic Economy in an effort to compete with Spirit. People started to get very nervous and ask the question, how could Spirit survive? Given the choice between a Basic Economy ticket on American, Delta, United, and a Spirit ticket, why would you still choose Spirit? Other airlines followed suit. United, American, JetBlue, and Hawaiian Airlines launched basic economy seats. Ticket prices fell across the U.S. Stock prices tumbled. For Spirit, something had to change. So in 2016, the company replaced longtime CEO Ben Baldanza with industry vet Robert Fernaro. Fenaro set out to address the growing number of customer complaints, reorientating the company toward customer service by lowering fees and delays. He pulled Spirit out of its freefall. But before the company could rebuild, the breaking news. Stay at home as the coronavirus pandemic spreads from the headline all around the world. The airline industry took a devastating hit. Major airlines were preparing to voluntarily shut down. Coming out of the pandemic, people were not really traveling for business in the same way they had before. And the bigger airlines started going after people, going on vacation, and flying for leisure, which had always kind of been Spirit's best customers. No one was surprised when two years later, Frontier, another budget airline, announced a $2.9 billion cash-in stock deal to buy Spirit. The deal was announced everything kind of seemed to be going along, and then kind of out of nowhere in April, JetBlue swoops in with its own offer for Spirit. That offer came in 2022. All cash, $3.6 billion. Shares rose 22%. JetBlue's offer was not solicited, and Spirit was really resistant to it. Spirit execs wondered whether JetBlue offered a separate deal in an attempt to block their deal with Frontier. 
By July, the Frontier deal fell through, and on the 28th, JetBlue agreed to acquire Spirit for $3.8 billion. But on January 16th, a federal judge blocked JetBlue's acquisition of Spirit, citing antitrust issues. That day, shares fell 47%. Even though Spirit's a really small player, the Justice Department felt that it plays a really important role. It serves people who maybe wouldn't have access to travel otherwise, who just couldn't afford to travel on other airlines. Spirit's problems didn't end with the failed mergers. It had ordered expensive new planes from Airbus to run more flights, but deliveries were delayed. Then in July 2023, there was a recall for an Airbus engine. Spirit had to ground some of its planes. Spirit was already in debt, so it sold more than two dozen planes and used that money to pay down $465 million, then rented the planes back to keep flights running. As of January 2024, the company has roughly $1.1 billion in debt due in September 2025. There are analysts who think that Spirit doesn't necessarily have as much of a path forward and might ultimately have to file for bankruptcy and maybe even liquidate. But only time will tell. Now it's time to share your thoughts. Do you think Spirit will fail? Have any of you flew Spirit before? Are you surprised that Spirit might fail considering all the customer complaints? Please leave your comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Again, please support the channel by hitting the subscribe and like button, and as always, please share the video. Thanks for watching.